Hello guys, welcome to my channel HVR Tutorials. In my earlier video, we have already looked into XPath and CSS selectors, right? What is meant by XPath and what are the different types of XPath available and how to write a relative XPath using operators, functions and relationships. And the same goes to CSS selector, like what is meant by a CSS selector and what are the different types of CSS selectors and how to write a CSS selector using operators, functions and relations, right? So if you haven't watched my previous videos, please click on this link to watch my previous videos. So this has two playlists, XPath and CSS selector. So you can watch individual video and you can get the full concept of what exactly this is and how you can write that, okay? So in this video, we will mainly focus on the differences between XPath and CSS selector. So this is one of the most commonly asked interview question and even it is running in your mind, right? Like, what is the difference between XPath and CSS selector? Why we need to use XPath or why we need to use CSS selector only like that, right? So basically, Selenium is providing us eight locators and out of eight locators, six locators are pretty much straightforward, like ID, class, or name, or link text, partial link text, tag name. So those are pretty much common, right? So if those things are nothing to do with other elements. It will directly point to the element. But this XPath and CSS selector, these actually used to find the dynamic elements or the elements which do not have any unique attributes, or if you want to find out any element using other element reference, in those scenarios, we will use this XPath and CSS selector, right? So these two serve the same purpose. So that is the reason people will have a question, like what is the difference actually? Like what is the difference between CSS selector and the XPath? And why we need to choose CSS selector over XPath or XPath over CSS selector? So in this video, we will cover that. We will see what are the differences and we will see which one we need to pick and in which scenarios we need to pick which one. Okay. So let's get started. So here, if you want to compare this XPath and CSS selector, first you should remember three things. Those are performance, then user friendliness, and the last one is element identification. Okay. So the performance is the major factor here. Everybody will think, right? Like if you want to find out any element, those people will say like XPath is faster than the CSS selector or XPath is slower than CSS selector. Why are you using XPath? Like that they will say, right? So here you should know which one is performing the faster and which is a user friendly one and which will identify any kind of element. So you need to consider all these three things. Then only you can decide which one you need to pick. Okay. So first thing first, we'll go with performance. Okay. So there are so many people who say that CSS selector is faster than the XPath. And some people say XPath is faster than CSS selector. So let's find out. So here I have created one class file with simple class file, okay? I'm doing a simple operation here. What I'm doing basically, I'm trying to open this URL. I will enter some text into this text box, this cloud account name, then I will close it, okay? So this operation I'm going to perform in all the browsers like IE, Firefox, and Chrome. And we will perform the same operation using XPath and using CSS selector. Okay. So here, if you see, this is the XPath I'm using. The text box is having one name, a basic XPath. Okay. I'm not using any relations or anything, a basic XPath. So I'm trying to find out this text box using this XPath. And the similar way, I'm trying to find out the same text box using this CSS selector. Okay both will work on the same thing. We will try to find out that one and we will enter some text in that one, okay? So here now you see, I have uncommented the Internet Explorer code. So let's just execute this one, okay? So here what I'm doing basically is, I'm opening Internet Explorer browser. I will try to launch this URL, okay? Then I'm calculating the start time here before actually entering this one. And after entering this one, I'm calculating the end time and I'm taking the difference of that one and I'm printing it, okay? So the same goes to CS selector, next execution, okay? So first let me execute this. So now it has to open the Internet Explorer and enter the test, okay, in the text box. And this time we are finding this using XPath. So it opened that, entered the text and closed it, right? So here it took around 1099 milliseconds. So what I will do here, I have an Excel sheet. I'll just try to note down these things. Okay. 
in IE for X path it took 1099 milliseconds. Okay. So then what we will do, we will just comment this X path and we will uncomment this one CSS selector. Okay. We will execute this. So now we are executing in the IE browser only, but we are trying to find out the element using CSS selector. Test is entered and it closed. Okay. So this one is taking around 1330 milliseconds. So let me copy that and I'll just note it down here. Okay. So next one is Firefox browser. So here, I'll just comment this IE related code. Okay. I'll just execute this Firefox one. So first we'll execute the export here also, right? Firefox browser is open. The page is loaded properly and test is entered and it closed. Okay. So it took around 75 milliseconds here, right? So let me just note it here, 75 milliseconds. Okay, next we will execute the CSS selector in the Firefox browser. Okay, so this one took around 79 milliseconds. So I'll just note it here. So the last one is Chrome. So I'll just copy these two lines and I'll uncomment this Chrome related code. Okay, so now let's execute with the CSS selector basically first. Okay. So this is taking around 270 milliseconds. Okay, I have executed with CSS selector 270. The next we will try to execute with XPath. Okay, same thing. If you execute CSS selector or XPath, anything is same. Okay. So now it took around 180 milliseconds, right? So let me just note it down here. So now you see the difference. Okay. So in IE, XPath took around 1100 milliseconds, right? And CSS took 1330. Okay. So here the XPath is better. And here Firefox took lesser time than the CSS. So here also XPath is better. And the Chrome also. XPath took less time than compared to CSS selector. So now we have executed the same code by just changing the browsers and the locators, right? The code is nothing changed and you saw the differences, right? So here and, and overall you can say XPath is the faster one when compared to CSS. You saw the results here, right? So in this one XPath wins over CSS. So the next one is user friendliness. So here user friendliness means how easily you can write the pattern. I mean, either it is a XPath or CSS selector and how easily you can read it. Okay. So for example, today you are writing XPath or CSS selector, anything. Okay. And tomorrow a new person comes into the project and he has to understand the entire code, right? So will he able to understand if you write XPath or will he able to understand if you write CSS selector? So that's the question. Just consider he has a little bit experience with XPath and CSS selector, both in same level. So in that case, he will be understanding XPath better than the CSS selector. Why? Because in XPath, you are going to write the text format. Okay. For example, you are trying to find out one sibling, then you will write following sibling. You will write the text. Okay. 
and in CSS selector, you will have one operator. And if you use that operator, it will try to find the operation, right? Like the following sibling operation will be performed. So for following sibling, what we will do, we will use plus symbol in CSS selector. But in next part, we are going to write following sibling. So which one is easily actually? When you look at that XPath or CSS selector pattern, here in the XPath, you are writing following sibling. So he will understand easily. If you write parent, he will understand, okay, from this one, he is going to the parent. Like that, he will understand. But in the CSS selector, he will not. If he knows that what exactly this symbol is doing, then he will understand. But if he has no idea about that symbol, he has to Google it, right? In CSS selector, what plus is used for? Like that, he has to do. So here in the user friendliness also, while reading, XPath wins. But while writing, obviously, if a person is writing there, so he has some idea about XPath and CSS selector, right? He knows how to use them. So in that case, he feels like CSS selector is faster one. Why? Because here we are using a simple symbol, right? Like I want to find out a following sibling, then I'll just put plus. But in XPath, I have to write following sibling, the entire text I need to type. So while writing, mostly you can say like CSS selector wins, but it's up to you. Like in one way, CSS selector wins and in another way, XPath wins, okay? And the next one is element identification. So here, how easily and how effectively you can identify the element, okay? This third point discuss about these things. Like for example, in the XPath, you can entirely traverse through the DOM. But in CSS selectors, you cannot do that. In CSS selector, you can go only in the forward direction. You can traverse only in the forward direction. You cannot go in the backward direction, okay? But in XPath, you can go in the backward direction as well. So for example, you have something like from the child, you want to identify parent, okay? In those scenarios, which one is easier? XPath, right? Because XPath is providing the backward direction also. From child, you are going to find out the parent. But in CSS selector, you cannot do that, okay? Or let's just say we have a table, okay? So let me just show you that. So here I have one website. I'll just go to XPath practice here. So I have one table like this, okay? So in this case, I want to check the checkbox based on the contact name, okay? I want to select this Helen, this checkbox. So in XPath, I can do that because it supports the backward direction also. We have the preceding sibling also, right? So I can just find out this one, this cell, then from this one, I can just find out this one, okay? But in CSS selector, can you do that? No, you can check this checkbox, but not exactly by using this contact name, okay? Because in CSS selector, it doesn't support the backward direction, okay? So first, what you need to do, you need to find out this contact, this cell index, okay? Then the next line, you need to check this one. So it's like a two-step process. You cannot do it in the one step, right? But in XPath, you can do it. Okay, and XPath supports many functions than the CSS selector. So it's like whatever is there in CSS selector, everything is supported by XPath. And apart from those, XPath has extra functions. Okay, like if you want to find out one link, so this sign in link is there. Okay, so let's say you want to identify this link using this text sign in. So how do you do that in CSS selector? For finding any element using text, you don't have any method, right? We don't have any way to do that in CSS selector. But in XPath, you have a function that is text. So using that, you can find out this one, okay? Here, XPath wins actually. Why? In CSS selectors, you are not able to find some elements, right? Some specific scenarios. But using XPath, you can obviously find that element, any element, right? So that is the reason here, XPath wins. So in the first point also, XPath wins. And in the third point also, XPath wins. And in the second point, XPath wins in one scenario and CSS selector wins in one scenario. It's like type, okay? So on overall three points, you can say two are supporting the XPath and one is supporting maybe CSS, okay? So that is the reason here you have to think about all these scenarios before choosing any locator like XPath or CSS selector, okay? So here I have prepared one list just comparing how we write the same thing in XPath and how we write the same thing in CSS selector, okay? 
So if you want to find out any element using ID in XPath, you will write something like this. The tag name, then the attribute name and attribute value. Slash slash input at the rate ID equal you name. But in CSS selector, for ID and class, we have a shortcut, right? Hash and dot. Hash for ID and dot for class. So here I say input hash you name. Okay. So if you want to identify any other attribute other than ID and class name in CSS selector, we have to follow this one, this syntax. Your tag name, then here you need to write your attribute, attribute value. In XPath and in CSS selector, this is similar, but just this at the rate symbol will not be there. Okay. So the next child, here we use a single slash and here we use greater than symbol. And for descendant or grandchildren, here we use double slash and here we use a space. Okay. And for parent and ancestor, in XPath, you can do it because the parent and ancestor are like backward direction. But in CSS selector, you cannot do that. This will not support that. Okay. And following sibling, here you have to write this entire text following sibling. And here you can simply put a plus symbol. Okay. And preceding sibling, again, it is like a backward direction. So you cannot do that. So like this, I have mentioned all the differences here. Okay. This is like a cheat sheet. And few more things are like text and normalized space, as I told. So these two things can be done in XPath and they cannot be performed in CSS selector. Okay. So you can pause the video or you can take a screenshot of this cheat sheet and you can try. Okay. So these are the major differences between XPath and CSS selectors, guys. Okay. So in the points wise, like this, these three points, or in the syntax wise, you can see this one. Okay. So it's up to you which one you want to choose. After analyzing all those points also, if you want to go for CSS selector, it's your wish, okay? And one more thing, it's not mandatory that you have to use only the XPath or only CSS selector in your project, okay? Wherever you want to use XPath, you can use the XPath. For example, you are trying to find out some parent or some preceding sibling or something which involves backward direction, then you can go for XPath. And if it was only the forward direction, you can go for CSS selector. And for the people who are coming from the development background, for definitely they will love CSS selector because they might have used this CSS selector there. Okay. So I leave the choice to you guys and please let me know which one you prefer in your project in the comment section below. Okay. So if you have any doubts also, please let me know. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you like this video, please hit the like button and also share it with your friends. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.